Over the last few months when I've stood in this chamber to debate a bill like the Westpac New Zealand bill, I have had um, several deja vu uh, moments, those experiences of having been here before, and it's a bit like what we in Christchurch are starting to call Groundhog Day, been there, done that, ready to move on. Uh, but these bills are, are, are like, it's an experience akin to being on the set of a rolling movie called The Emperor's New Clothes. Some of the House might remember that story. It's the story in which two weavers promised the Emperor a new set of clothes, clothes that are invisible to those unfit for their positions, stupid or incompetent. When the Emperor parades before his subjects, however, a voice rings out, he isn't wearing anything at all. Now, of course, there is no one in this House that could be said to be unfit for their positions or stupid or incompetent, so I am very pleased to stand here today and see that we are all clothed. But what may be invisible is the cloak of steel that every Christchurch MP wears when we come back to this House, a cloak that reflects the courage, the grit and the sheer determination of each one of our constituents as they will themselves to face another day in the wake of ongoing tremors of the earth. The point of the story is just to point out the utter contrast that Christchurch MPs encounter as we try to reconcile the reality of our lives at home with our business in the House. It is such a constant challenge to focus on the events of a legislative day when back in Christchurch my Adenoi office is unusable again or was until late this morning. The water is out, the roof is partially fallen in and what is even worse for my staff actually is that the TV is, is munted. Following the double whammy of aftershocks on Monday, my constituents in the eastern suburbs are once again confronting the challenge of cleaning up the liquefaction. We had people staying in Cal Stadium Welfare Centre again. The water tankers are out on the roads. The Farmy Army and the Student Army are getting themselves prepared to get out on the streets again. And throughout it all, throughout it all fatigue and tension overwhelm us all. But it's not just the nerves in the buildings that have taken a hit. Our economic position is once again threatened by as much as $6 billion estimated in new damage. Mr Speaker, I lay all this before the House as part of the context in which we consider this the Westpac New Zealand Bill. The entire economy, and in particular the Canterbury economy, is in such a state of uncertainty as we reel to the impacts of earthquakes and related damage. We must ensure we respond to such uncertainty by acting in decisive ways to improve efficiencies and to do whatever is necessary in any quarter to achieve the stability we all desire. And so in that sense we turn to this bill knowing that it is part of a move to improve compliance and accountability in the banking section to ensure the efficient conduct of Westpac New Zealand's core business. The Māori Party supports the intention of this bill to vest certain assets and liabilities of, Westport, of Westpac Banking Corporation into Westpac New Zealand rather than remaining incorporated in Australia. It is consistent with the Reserve Bank's local incorporation policy and it complies with the overall direction to bring such banks home. We understand also that legislation is the only means by which the vesting of these assets and liabilities in Westpac can be effected efficiently and economically, and as such, of course, we will support this move. As I understand it, both Westpac Banking Corporation in Australia and Westpac New Zealand will be able to continue to share information and intellectual property. These are all factors that we can support in this third reading of the bill. In particular, we have support for the basic principles of a local incorporation policy as it is consistent with Māori Party policy of keeping things local, of investing in our own sovereignty. Six months ago, Ngai Tahu leader Mark Solomon, along with Tuka Morgan, Naida Glavish and Ngāhiwi Otera Bidwa, attended a meeting on public-private partnerships hosted by Sir Ron Carter with all the major banks and 40 major companies. At that meeting there was a big banner asking, are iwi ready to invest? Mark Solomon faced the gathering and told them that their question was back to front. He suggested that instead of the question it should read, are you ready to invest with iwi? As we have stood in front of you all for 150 years and been absolutely invisible. There's something in his comment, I think, 
to consider as we reflect on the direction outlined in this bill of trusting in our own domestic market. Finally, while we do support this bill at its third and final reading, I would just note that at some point in this House we do need a full discussion about the leadership that the banking and the finance industry is, should put in place measures to prevent or mitigate, mitigate against the damaging effects of a global recession. Kia ora. David Bennett. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I um, just wanted to uh, take a short call in regard to the Westpac New Zealand bill, a bill that many of us have spoken a number of times about in this House. And uh, just want to congratulate Craig Foss, who, um, the Honourable Craig Foss now, who uh, uh, shepherded this bill through the House and um, has been ably taken over by um, Amy Adams as Chair of the Finance and Expenditure Select Committee. When we look at this bill, it's a, it's a fairly simple uh, reason and, and explanation behind why it came before this House. Uh, basically, uh, it's to enable Westpac to meet its um, obligations in regard to its, its capital requirements under the Reserve Bank Act. And so uh, the changes that are proposed um, in the bill enable Westpac to meet its obligations and is in the best interest um, of Westpac itself, um, it's in the best interests of uh, the New Zealand government and the New Zealand economy to have Westpac operating under the rules and regulations of the country. And it's also in the best interests of the uh, many people that invest, uh, whether as uh, putting their savings into Westpac or uh, draw funds off Westpac as borrowers, um, in the sense that you have a bank that is stable, large, and part of the economic framework of New Zealand. However, the, um, the Labour Party and the Green Party have tended to use this, this, um, this bill as, a, as um, some bank bashing legislation for their purposes to just um, go out and, and try rhetoric around um, the, the devil that they see in the Australian banks and the New Zealand economy and perpetuating a lot of myths that um, really do create a, um, a lot of distraction um, in our economic environment and, and create a perception that just simply is, is not the case. And uh, the Labor Party talk about um, that, that you can only have banks if you've got large savings and the Greens talk about banks have invested in the wrong things. Well, they can't blame the Australian banks for those situations. Um, that's the typical Labor Green guilt jealousy trip that they put everybody under. Um, the reality is that banks deal with the, um, the issues of what an economy grants them. And, the, session, and the, the real problem in New Zealand has been the economic framework that the previous government set up in regarding to uh, property investment that led to, to the issues that, um, that have been resolved by this government in our tax changes. So this bill is a very important bill um, in the sense that um, it's not about um, Australian banks being dominant in our market or anything like that. It's about actually providing the economic framework so that these banks can actually perform the functions they do. And I think we need to pay tribute and, and, um, and actually thank those, those big banks that have actually um, provided stability in the New Zealand economy, which most other economies in the Western world haven't had. If you look at places like America and Britain, they would give their teeth to have um, stability in their banking sector over the last four or five years, which New Zealand has got through having um, the, the, the big Australian banks in this country. So, in essence, this bill is something that uh, is partly procedural in the sense of enabling Westpac to, to meet its requirements, but also um, is very important for our economy in the sense that we need to have a strong Westpac um, and be able to do and perform its functions as it desires to as a, as a big bank in this country and as part of the Australian uh, banking network as well through um, its parent company. So we look forward to this, uh, this bill passing through the House, Mr Speaker. Stuart Nash. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I would just like to clarify one point that the last speaker made. He said that the Labor and the Green members have used this as a piece of bank bashing legislation. Well, Mr Speaker, I 